Good morning or good day. Welcome like every day to Real Time Daily Trend Ideas. It's Monday, 11th of June 2018. We have five days a week, five different traders. We will speak about trading ideas, strategies, market screen, and maybe one or two questions from your side directly answered on our webinar. Our goal is quick and smart, but for that daily, so let's have a nice start like every day. And like every day, we will start with our risk disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposits. If you're a starter, Please start with a demo account and make yourself familiar with long trading, short trading, leverage trading, and your personal risk management. If you'd like to read the full risk claimer, just visit one of our web pages, for example, admamarkets.com, and you will find everything written down there. This is me. My name is Jens. I'm talking from the Berlin office from Admar Markets. We are a big international forex and CFD broker, over 18 country offices. So my English is made in Germany, but I'm not the main speaker. The main speaker is the day trader of today. This is our scheme. On Monday, like today, it's Jay's Day. On Tuesday, it's Paul's Day. On Wednesday, it's Giancarlo's Day. On Thursday, it's Inner's Day. On Friday, it's DX Day. Five days a week, five different traders, five different styles, our leading day traders live. And of course, if you like to trade, Forex and CFD. So we get many benefits only with us. For example, DAX 30, one of our best sellers, typical spread of just 0.8 points to the main trading hours. If you'd like to see all the details, check out admelmarkets.com. They will find also something about our regulatory background and how to contact us. You can call us, you can send us an email or visit the other channels like YouTube or Facebook. Also, everything's linked from admelmarkets.com. That's enough from my side. Now it's time for Jay. Good morning. Good day. Now it's your time. What's your view to the markets today, Jay? Hey, good morning, Jens. Good morning, traders. Let me show you a screen and let's get rocking and rolling. It's Central Bank Week. That's what we can call it. Headlines currently risk on, surprisingly enough. Why surprisingly am I saying that? Because the G7 quarreled like there is no tomorrow. Trump on the way out, backstabbing everyone, not agreeing to the final communique, tweeting like there's no tomorrow off of Air Force One. This is better than a soap opera. Unbelievable, all right? Um, but it's risk on and Italian debt is rallying, especially the bonds and the uh, futures. And then we see asset prices rebounding. Uh, why? Because the finance minister, Tria, eased investor concerns regarding a potential Italian exit from the EU. Uh, that's enough currently um, for the market to rally and have a an, uh, risk on mode. Italian 10 year is below 3%. Milan stock index was opening 2% higher and the euro dollar reclaimed the 118 handle. Tuesday, uh, i.e. tomorrow, we have Kim and Trump summit in Singapore and what is really the best case scenario. Good morning, you I'm just seeing you there. The best case scenario is a multi-year process for the complete, verifiable and irreversible dismantlement of the North Korean nuclear program, a halt of testing of ballistic missiles and laying out a potential enforcement mechanism to see uh, if these guys are holding true to their word. That's really it. Anything beyond that is just a, a photo opportunity. Um, this morning, as you can see, uh, data already came in, mixed data out of Japan, but pretty, pretty bad data out of Italy, industrial production uh, worse than expected. And then surprisingly enough, Chris, I think you'll agree with me here, uh, we have pound data coming in worse than expected and uh, pound immediately reacted to it and sold off. Um, for the next few days, we actually have better than expected data uh, or a better, uh, an expectation for better data for the pound. Um, and uh, I'm quite interested to see how the short end futures market is reacting to that in terms of pricing and a probability for an August rate hike by the Bank of England. Uh, we had a trade open Euro Canadian dollar and I spoke about it last week um, because I was trading it in a live account. This is a demo account. I had forgotten about it. but. Um, this was all the whole down move here, uh, This uh, uh, the, the stop runs that we saw here and here, you see the large pins, that was due to the Italian scare. And I felt at the time that that was overcooked and I, I was remaining bullish on the euro, so I kept adding to the position. So that's why this winner looks a little bit odd. And then we had long Aussie US dollar and we had position one, position two at the time. This was last week's trade. And position one, you can see, was actually entered right here. What a perfect 
EDT trade almost because it didn't go to 127 extension. But nevertheless, we hit the liquidity as expected. The market turned around as expected, where we said we expected to turn around. And now it's in a neutral mode. Overnight, we saw the typical risk on situation where both uh, funds flowing out of the Swiss and out of the Japanese yen. Uh, uh, yesterday, Sunday, we had the Vollgeld vote by the populace in Switzerland, and three quarters of the population actually um, denied that initiative. So, all else will stay equal in terms of fractional reserve banking out of Switzerland. And then, what do we have in terms of risk events for this week? Uh, pounds data already came worse, we saw that. And then on Tuesday, we have uh, Pound again, average earnings index. We have the claimant count, we have unemployment rate. Uh, we have the German ZEW, and we have dollar inflation numbers, CPI and core. And then on Wednesday, we have uh, Governor Lowe from the Reserve Bank of Australia speaking with Q&A expected, so that may lead to some volatility. Again, pound data, this time inflation, CPI and PPI, so producer, producer prices and consumer prices, and that will also be keenly watched by market participants, especially now since uh, uh, production numbers came in worse than expected. Uh, manufacturing production, that is. And then uh, on uh, Wednesday evening, we have the FOMC, the Fed, and I'll talk on that in a few seconds. And then Thursday, we have Australian data, uh, both for China and Aussie, and Aussie is just a suburb of Australia. So we have fixed asset investment in industrial production, and then we have employment change and unemployment rate out of Aussie. And you can already see here, there's an expectation for the employment change to tick down a little bit. So that's not that positive. Hey, what else could be happening besides economic numbers in the UK? Hey, we have retail sales coming out on Thursday, worse than last time with not 5% increase versus 1.6. We'll uh, mention a few reasons why that may be the case. Um, and then we have uh, the ECB. And there's a trade happening in a few minutes um, that I already punched in um, that involves the euro. So remain on the edge of your seat. <laughs> and then on Friday, we have uh, the third and final central bank decision for this week. And it's going to come out of Japan with the Bank of Japan policy rate decision and monetary policy statement, which is also quite interesting for us. And then in the afternoon, we have a few numbers out of the US. We have preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Index. Let me remind you, if this number here starts tanking sometime in Q3 or Q4, then be aware that U.S. equities could be starting to tip over. Could be, because overall I expect a very volatile year for U.S. equities, but I still expect them to finish the year green. That's my current expectation, okay? <clears throat> um, all right, hang on a second. Computer is slow. Here we go. U.S. dollar, now it gets interesting. Federal funds on uh, FOMC on uh, Wednesday. The expectation currently is FFR, that's the federal fund futures, pricing in a 91.3% probability that they're going to hike the rates by 25 basis points to the corridor 175.2. So that naturally means currently we're at 1.5% to 1.75. That's the corridor. And the focus naturally will be on the so-called dot plots. This basically, you can actually see it online in Bloomberg, but it's published all over the place. You can actually see um, what the individual Fed members expect in terms of rate rises, uh, how many for each year for the forecast period. And the question is, will we see one or two more hikes in 2018 and what lays in store beyond? So let me remind you, last time the dot plot showed uh, three hikes in 2018, three hikes in 2019, and two hikes in 2020. That would give us a peak rate of 325 to 350 in terms of the corridor. Now it gets interesting because FFR, the Federal Fund Futures, are currently pricing in a terminal rate of 2.5 to 275. Naturally, quite a bit below 3.5 to 3.25. Uh, 3 to 3 so in addition to that, there's something that's called a long-term rate. And the Fed has the view that the long-term rate will be around 275 to 3. In theory, the long-term rate shall equal the reinvestment rate. Uh, uh, sorry, the long-term rate shall equal the GDP growth of an economy. All right? 
So the Fed's view is that the U.S. economy in the long term would grow by around 275 to 3%. Now that's all theory. We all know how uh, well theory works out in reality. It doesn't. So the focus will be on the Fed raising, uh, and there's an additional focus. Sorry, I'm already jumping ahead to the next topic. There's an additional focus where the Fed alluded to in their last meeting minutes report that they're thinking about raising the interest rate on excess reserves. So we have a fractional reserve banking system. That means $100 in site deposits will get leveraged up to 100 times and lend out by banks uh, in terms of new money created, in terms of new credit. And new credit actually means GDP growth, at least in our Western industrialized nations, all right? We have GDP growth when credit is growing. When you and some companies stop uh, uh, borrowing money, uh, money, the GDP growth falls off a cliff. And then the government steps in and starts borrowing for us, you know? And so the, the, it's interesting that they're potentially raising the interest rates on these excess reserves. So the $100 site deposit that's getting leveraged 100% means out of the $100 site deposit, a bank needs to deposit as an excess reserve, basically um, as collateral for the new loans that they are pumping out $1 in reserves with the Federal Reserve Banking System. And this dollar may be um, uh, getting fetching more interest rates, uh, more yield going forward. So the market is actually focusing on that. Sorry for that longer explanation. For he or she who understands it, it's super, super important. Also very important is language changes. Last time um, they spoke about accommodative policy. How are they going to tweak that language? If they are, the dollar will react to that. And then we have the conference and we expect questions on the neutral rate. So this goes back to what we talked above here, uh, talked, uh, talked about above here. Um, and if the Fed will allow an overshoot of this neutral rate, and if so, how long and how high of an overshoot? Quite, quite interesting. So I'm expecting some uh, volatility out of the meeting and uh, that for anyone who's scalping, Frank, I don't know if you're listening to this, um, that's gonna be a good day for you, buddy. On the ECB front, um, the expectation is obviously that they're not touching rates this time, but the whole Euro rally currently is based on the fact that we had four members of the ECB hit the mic and talk about uh, talk hawkishly, okay? So all that's going on this week is an expectation that the Gremium is starting to talk about when will we stop the QE program. And currently it's supposed to run out September of this year, the market is pricing in that it's going to run out end of December of this year. So the market is fully prepared to accept that the ECB will extend this program for another quarter, but then they're going to start hitting the brakes. But listen carefully, please, if you understand this already, hopefully you do. Any on all debt that they bought that comes due and any on all interest payments means that the ECB will receive cash flow from the individual sovereigns and corporations where they bought the bonds off. That money is currently expected to be fully reinvested. So it's not really that they're full, that they're, it's not a heartbreak. It's not like your ABS is hitting, right? Um, it's, uh, tapering in a sense, in a smooth way. They're not lo looking to, on a monthly basis, purchase 30 billion more. They're simply saying, we're not purchasing 30 billion more, um, but we will reinvest any proceeds and coupon payments. So it's soft, but the market pricing today and acting on bets six to 18 months in the future will react to anything that comes out of the ECB uh, on this meeting. Um, so the four people that I alluded to were Whiteman, Hanson, Knott, and especially head of Econ Pratt. And they all spoke hawkish and in favor of ending the QE program. Also, we will see updated economic projections. And because we had a weaker euro and because we had higher oil prices since last meeting, since the last meeting, um, we expect that their projections on GDP growth for the eurozone and the euro area will be moderated a little bit downwards okay so that's already baked into the cake so to speak what's happening on the other side hello mr computer wow all right coffee break dude what's going on this is unacceptable all right here we go piece of shit. pound sorry 
Sorry for my French. Dude. All right. 12 hour Brexit debate starting on Tuesday in the comments. And then this Brexit bill that failed miserably in the House of Lords. If it passes in the Commons, it by Friday will go back to the House of Lords. Okay, what is this whole spiel about? I fully understand any retail trader going nuts over this because it's highly complicated by now. Recall, last time the House of Lords amended this stupid Brexit bill and they said, guys, one passage was, let's keep the UK in the EEA, that's the European Economic Area. And that's similar to what the Norway uh, model um, is like, meaning, uh, the UK gets access granted to the EU trade. The hardliner Brexiteers don't want that. On top of this whole Brexit discussion and May being questionable how firmly she's in the saddle because she has such a, uh, there's a mutiny going on inside of her own party. Um, we have this deluge of domestic data. We had uh, uh, production um, just now coming in worse. Then on Tuesday, we have jobs and average uh, earnings index will be the key focus here. And it's expected that um, the metrics will remain at 2.6 and 2.9 respectively. All right, so no increase in terms of average earnings expected at the moment. If, if there's an increase, naturally the pound will rally on it. Because the thinking, the logic is, Higher earnings lead to higher inflation, lead to BOE needing to fight inflation six to 18 months down the road, meaning August rate hike probability increases. Naturally, the pound will strengthen on the back of it. And then Wednesday, we have actual CPI numbers. CPI and PPI are measures for inflation, and the year on year is expected to tick higher to 2.5, and the core is expected to remain at 2.1. Here, the same spiel. We have higher energy prices. Should these pass through, then we see higher inflation and that could increase the probability of an August rate hike. And last but not least, the retail sales figure is the same thing. We're expected to fall from 1.6 to 0.5. Um, year on year is expected to show a small uptick. There's a BRC, Google that if you're really into it, to my traders, start Googling BRC. And they reported that total spending in May rose 4.1% year on year. So there's some strength in the background because it's the fastest rate of growth since January of 14. But, and again, there's always a stupid but, the but is that petrol prices, the gas price at the pump increased and that may have held back the retail client, the retail client, the consumer in terms of retail sales. All right. So potentially with production coming in worse, um, uh, mixed data out of UK, which could increase volatility for the pound, which means for you, every time that you trade pound this week, your stops need to increase. Yen, nothing out of the Bank of Japan, really expected on Friday. We expect them to keep rates unchanged and we expect them to keep their 10-year yield target to be maintained at not percent. Some of you may not know this, uh, the Bank of Japan is the only central bank known currently that also um, fixes the 10-year yields. Usually, Western central banks fix the short end in the terms of uh, yield curve, and they set the rate for short-term yields. Japan also sets the rate for 10-year, so if you borrow in Japan 10-year money, you pay nothing, it's for free. And funny enough, inflation is not increasing there. Here's something that you may keep on the back of your mind, in the back of your mind. Henrik, this is especially for you. The next sales tax hike is slated for October 19. Uh, Abi in the past had to uh, get rid of this uh, and delay this several times in the past because it's bad for the consumer, a hike in sales tax, and what's bad for the consumer is bad for the economy, is also bad for inflation. And this is the number one conundrum that the Bank of Japan has. They currently own 78% of all sovereign debt, of their own debt. They buy their own government bonds and they hold 85% of ETFs, exchange traded funds. Yet, there's no inflation. <laughs> so the expectation really is that the central bank will leave the policy unchanged for the foreseeable future. That's why I said nothing new out of the BOJ. So in summary, Fed expected to raise, ECB expected to communicate to us if and when and how they're intending to stop with QE, quantitative easing, when they will stop buying bonds, and uh, Bank of Japan, nothing new from the land of the, is it the rising sun? I don't know, I think it is. All right, um, let's see if the computer decides to cooperate.
It's unbelievable. <laughs> I just have to laugh at this point. Okay, commitment of traders. Aussie long and fired a long signal. Swiss franc on its way to a long signal. I actually thought that this Volgeld initiative would have caused more volatility, but it didn't. Uh, volatility, speaking of, euro increased naturally, all right? A pound increased naturally. Um, yen increased and the VIX decreased. We have NASDAQ and especially the so-called FANG plus index at new all-time highs last week. So um, equities are pumping higher. I'm constructive on US equities. I continue to remain constructive. I'll let you know if and when that changes. And I'm long US equities naturally. Bullish on Monday London session out of option pricing, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> bearish on Monday London session, bearish euro dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss and euro yen, interestingly enough. So it's difficult to uh, capture a trade idea out of option pricing, option flows. Um, this is Friday's data, so they're missing the G7 debacle. Uh, Monday London session, bullish Aussie, Canadian dollar, yen and gold and bearish pound, euro and Swissy. Swissy pound already worked out well. Euro not so because euro is actually bullish in the London session this morning. Um, caught large speculator sentiment. Uh, they actually changed their dollar position slightly, as you can see. This is just the slush specs. Potential trade for this week. What is my trade idea? Now, I think it was City. City came out this morning and they are recommending. Let me peek over and let me see if I can find it real quick for you guys. City, where was your trade idea for this morning? Uh, let's see. Funny enough, I can't find it. It was dollar cat long. I recall that. Citigroup is uh, recommending to clients a dollar cat long. Huh. But I can't find the levels. Too bad. Uh, uh, I'm currently still long Aussie dollar. Okay, I can't find it. I don't want to waste our time. Let's go back to our trade idea for this week, long Euro Yen. Why Euro? My expectation is for a classic buy the rumor, sell the fact into the ECB on Thursday. Obviously, there's some positive Euro flows. Just like a couple of weeks ago when I felt that the Euro short was overcooked, I currently think the Euro long is overcooked. I think the economic projections will be moderated down. Um, I don't see as strong um, economic growth as the market is currently trading here. I think this is just on the back of the four hawkish speakers and anything that's less hawkish out of the ECB on Thursday will cause a sell-off. And that is my speculation. So let's join the bandwagon, everybody and my grandmother along the Euro and then sell that piece of crap ahead of the Thursday ECB. Yen currently risk on. So amazing information, amazing. After the G7 failed, we have risk on, wow. I don't bet against the market. I completely do not agree, but I can't go against the market. So let's go along Euro Yen. Trade structure to limit buy orders, stop loss 147 pips off of average price, risk for the trade naturally, any risk of sentiment, like for example, tomorrow's Kim Trump summit ending in an ugly photo and no news, um, that would cause potentially a risk off and then the yen sees inflows and or we have very negative economic numbers for the euro this week, but honestly guys, not really any tier one uh, data in the docket. So I think we have a uh, free flight ahead, long Euro into the ECB. You can see the trade right here, um, already plugged in. So uh, take profit for both is right up here above liquidity. And then uh, I need the square up here of this candle and I need uh, to hit the roll reversal for my long one. And then my long two will naturally be at the second line of defense, I call it. Uh, it's another volume area right here where we had two-way two -way price action, uh, very solid natural level to long the second one. If I fail, I have two swings below. I have my stop like everyone else in the whole world, then so be it. 1% will be gone down the drain. But overall, we're doing really well in this uh, uh, Admiral Markets account. And uh, I wish you all a very positive and good solid week. Trade a little bit careful, guys. Um, pound, there's a lot of headline news coming uh, in terms of Brexit. Theresa May really not that firmly in the saddle. Uh, Euro, don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. 
don't believe that hype. Um, economic growth is not as solid um, as it looks to be at the moment. And um, last not but least, don't expect too much out of the Bank of Japan. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good year so far. If you're down, don't worry. We still have six months left uh, to make up for it. Learn how to trade, learn how to trade the institutions, and then always, always, always manage your risk and all will be fine. Greetings to my traders. Thanks for you all for showing up this morning. I appreciate that. Have a solid week and I'll catch you guys, not next week, Jens, because I'm giving a seminar the week after. Please find a replacement for me next week if that's okay by you, Jens. All and then right. in two weeks, we'll be back here making some money. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks to Jay. Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is the day trader of the day will be Paul. So hope to see and join you all together again. And if you'd like to see this uh, webinar again, a couple of hours later, available as a video in our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. Have a good time. Good trades. Bye-bye.